Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and recently I've been thinking about repinnable, sometimes cutaway practice locks, and these are just some of the ones I've grabbed. This one, in fact, I, I made myself out of um, a spare Euro cylinder, a hacksaw, and a file, and I'll leave a link to the video of how you can make one of those yourself. Um, but these are two commercially available cutaway practice locks. And the reason I was thinking about these is that, well, they are really good in the way that they mean that you don't have to spend money on loads and loads of locks um, straight away. You can uh, usually buy these with some interchangeable driver pins of different types and varieties, different security pins, those kind of things. You can uh, just take one lock with you for practice and a, uh, you know a, a few uh, different types of pins if you go away somewhere so you need to carry loads and loads of heavy locks. There's, you know, there's lots of good reasons to have one of these, especially when you start out. But when I was using one of these a few years back now, I never really challenged myself. I never really mixed the pins up in different um, orders. I never really uh, you know, took inspiration from just a load of security pins and a lock. So I thought about that and I thought, well, wouldn't a good solution be something like this? So this is something which I just had made up for myself. It didn't cost very much, I think around, um, about five dollars or so, and um, and you can get these made up in loads of different places. It's just a, a dice, and I wish I'd sort of got this engraved, but to save time, I just had uh, this one printed. And this is a, a just a, a six face dice with lots of different security pins. So we have, um, and I'll show you the pins just in a second. So I have a standard pin there, I have a spool pin there, I have a mushroom spool there. And I've got a double spool like those Asa star pins, and then last but certainly not least, a serrated pin. Now, I actually have all of those here for you, so you can see what they look like for real. So there's a standard pin, spool pin, mushroom pin, uh, double spool, and serrated. And uh, to me, I think these are probably the most common security pins that you get inside of locks. Now, what I suggested that we do with a dice like this is come up with a range of different games. So paired with another standard die like this, we could actually do a number of different uh, things and challenge ourselves to different configurations um, just by rolling the dice for each position. So I actually came up with a, um, a few different games. I'll flash a couple of the uh, cards up and have this idea that you know, you could actually have uh, custom playing cards printed, another thing which you, you can do relatively easily. Um, and you can have sort of uh, little rule cards. I'll I'll put a couple of them up now, and then I'll, right at the end of the video, I'll put the rest of the rules up. Um, just so that you could, you know, challenge yourself and a friend to sort of pinning up a lock and then picking it um, in different orders. So a couple of the ways in which I thought that that could be done was you could just start at, say, position one, roll the dice, see which pin. If it turns out to be the wild card, then the wild card could be anything. It could be, I don't know, say it's a, a pin type you're struggling with, so you want to focus on spools, so that's now a spool pin as well, so you've got a double spool roll. Maybe it's um, that you put in a custom pin type which isn't on the dice. So say you had um, a T-pin from another set, well, throw that in if you roll the uh, the wild card. Maybe it's take a shot. I don't know, whatever you wanted. Um, and that's why I put the wild card there. It's sort of a, a, an extra placeholder. So the idea is you roll your way through and do that. Maybe you, you would start with um, all standard pins and you would roll the dice to see which one of those you want to swap out. So you only swap out, say, a few rolls at a time um, and then give it a go. Uh, so that you would you know, start with standard pins. You'd roll this. It'd be, say, a four. You'd roll it. It'd be a serrated pin. So you put a serrated pin in position four. Roll it again. It's five. And then you roll it and then it turns into I don't know, a small pin this time. And there's a, a few, like I said, a few little games I thought of uh, regarding this. Just to mix up, to make sure that you uh, weren't subconsciously giving yourself an easy challenge, that you were really doing a random job, um, that you could have some fun with friends, so you know you couldn't be um, accused of making an impossible challenge lock or something like that. You know, you could just roll the dice a few times, um, and then each time yourself to pick it, for example, um, you know, against the clock. I just thought, you know, it would just add uh, another uh, layer to um, to 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 these. Uh, 
repinnable challenge locks. Now, um, where do I get the pins from? Well, I always thought that this die set would actually make a good accompaniment to the Sparrows reload kit. I think that's what it's called. And um, this comes with a couple of pinning mats and um, and it comes with various keys with the key pins, uh, a follower for removing the, the core spare springs and bits and bobs. And I thought actually that dice could easily be thrown in to this as well. And for the most part, you could use, um, you know, the, the pins that are in there. They have most of the pins apart from the double spools. I actually got mine from South Coast Lock Bits from eBay um, in the UK. I really like this kind of uh, a bullseye symbol. And uh, this pack that I got from them, which has loads of security pins in, had all sorts of uh, uh, spools, double spools, um, standard pins, you name it. So it, was, you know, uh, it wasn't very much money at all. So you can easily make your, yourself up um, a kit. You could really just make the dice to your own specification, whatever pins you had around. It doesn't have to be these ones. It's just ones that I fancied because I, I thought they were the most common. Um, so yeah, I thought, you know, something like that, you could throw it in a kit like this, um, close it up and you're ready to go. In fact, I even think that one of these little um, uh, locks can also go in there and it actually shuts up as well. So there you go. So yeah, uh, you, so you can buy these security pins from places. Sparrow sell them, South Coast Lock Bits sell them. I know other sellers might sell them as well. Maybe you can even buy massive full-on locksmith kits for hundreds of pounds if you if you were really into it, but you know, probably not. Um, and I just scoop these into my hand. All I needed to make sure that I had every um, combination available was um, six different security pins from each type. So, well, actually, no five because what I had a wild card. So it's really only thirty pins I needed to find together. You could even probably scavenge them from other broken locks or friends or who knows what. So yeah, so that's, that's what I really needed. Just uh, maybe a standard dice, a few security pins, a practice lock, and you're ready to go. So um, what, what should we do? Well, I think before I flash up the little rule cards which I had created, um, I think we should have a go at uh, rolling the dice a few times pinning up a lock and then picking it. So I'm just going to use this in its most basic uh, form. We're just gonna, I've got a five pin uh, key here. I just chose that from the kit. Um, thought it had some reasonable bitting, sort of high, low, high, quite like that. Um, you see that I've got the associated key pins in the plug here. There we go, so they're all nice. Let's then roll this dice a few times, hopefully it's not too loud, um, and we'll pin it from pin one to five. So pin one is going to be a serrated pin. Let's grab one of those. Pin two, keep it in there, it's a spool pin. Grab one, no, it's a mushroom pin, sorry, mushroom pin, make sure that's the right way around. Um, and again, which way up is it? Does it go this way or this way? Um, I'm gonna put it that way because that's just the way the dice fell. Okay, three. Ooh, a wild card. Um, I'm gonna call that roll again. A spool pin, a real spool this time. Must be able to grab one of those, there we go. Four is another wild card. All right, roll again. Don't really want to be taking shots at this time of the day so there we go and a standard pin there so and last pin is serrated um so again that wild card could have been anything maybe if i decided up front it was another serrated pin or it was a standard pin or if i wanted to make it easier it could be a standard pin um if i had another pin type maybe from one of my um uh, original sets like the christmas pins something like that i could have chosen one of those pins to go in there you know just mix it up uh, that's what that, that's the best thing you don't need to have a wild card if you make your own dice you could make it anything you want i just like the idea of having that flexibility of, of a wild card right um i'm going to throw these pins in here um stick and show you and then stick it in the vice and then we'll, we'll have a go at picking it so here is the lock all pinned up just pop the key in and um you can see now the key's in all the driver pins 
You can see it's the way that we rolled. So we have serrated, standard, spool, mushroom, and serrated. This might not be the most effective or hardest way to pin this lock, depending on the bitting. Um, but you know, you can always just keep the bitting the same and change the sorry, the, the, the pinning the same, then change the key to change the bitting, in which case these will come into play in different ways. You could re-roll um, to re-pin it uh, randomly the next time and the next time and the next time. If you had a friend or family member who could pin the lock up for you, then um, they could do that and you wouldn't know what's inside if you taped over it or you used a lock which didn't have a viewing window. If you had like a Sparrow's revolver with four different uh, lock chambers or Bibles, then you could actually get somebody to pin it up four times for you. Yeah, I mean, the the... It's, it's sort of endless accommodations which you could do that. So I'm just going to pop this in um, here like that, tighten it up, just a homemade sort of kick holder. Bit of top of the keyway tension like that to make sure you can see what's going on. I think that should be okay. Why not? Why not? And um, let's have a go at picking it. Okay, pin five. Little click. Any more? Oh, yeah, little click. Four. Nothing. Three. A oh, little click. Two. Little click. One. Uh, do you know what? I swear I got a little click out of one. It's very hard to get onto one. But we're not open, so let's see what else we've got. Five. Seems okay. Four. Three. Oh, three. Little click. Two. I think we dropped five at the back. Yep, I felt that go again. And got another little click out of that. That's pin two I just got there. Pin one now. I really find it hard to get onto pin one in this lock. Um, I think it's just the very high cuts there. So we're held up on something. A little click on three there. Nothing on two. Back to pin one. Seems good. Back to pin five. And that's pin two that time. One feels completely set now. So Definitely feel it's something at the back, maybe five, maybe four, no, maybe three, maybe two. Oh, one little click, so that means more on one. Another click, any more on one? Ah, yes, and we are open. There we go. Oh, do you know what? That, that was quite a challenge. I'll I tell you what, those serrated pins. Those are tough. They they really like dig into this. You, you can hear how crunchy that was on the uh, microphone. Yeah, so kind of cool. All right. Well, I was already challenged. I would never have pinned that lock up that way. I doubt I'd ever have done that. Um, but again, the dice dictated that that was the case. So that's what we got. So I guess really my question to you is, what do you think to um, this idea? Is it a good idea? Would you make one of these yourselves? Would you buy one? Is it worth me? taking this to a manufacturer and saying, hey, you know, this is people seem to like this idea or 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 just leave me a comment and say, actually, no, that's a, a really bad idea. I don't think I'd ever uh, make one of these or use one, um, even if it was gifted to me. I don't know, whatever. If you do like the idea, how would you expand on the idea? Um, would you make any different rules or games up? I'm just really interested to know your thoughts. Um, it's just a, an idea which I had. I really hope you like it. Just like I said, let me know um, in the comments if you like it, uh, uh, what you do to expand on the idea, if anything, um, would you buy one or make one yourself? Yeah, just just really let me know. Really fascinated to know what you think. And it's just something which I, I well, I'm going to get a lot of uh, pleasure and use out of this. I'm going to have some fun. And if I ever go to a, a lock sport meetup or anything like this, I'm going to take this and uh, I'm going to challenge people to um, to to you know roll the dice and uh, and pin up a lock for each other so yeah that's gonna be kind of cool and good fun right hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you all next time